Hello and welcome to the latest webinar from Essent. Today we're going to highlight some of the technological factors involved in search engine optimization. My name is Doug Brill. I'm the Essent Marketing Coordinator and I specialize in the promotional products industry. I'm also your moderator today. Before we begin, a very brief overview of Essent. Essent is the leader in providing comprehensive business management solutions since 1981. Essent has been serving distributors, decorators, and suppliers in the promotional products industry since the year 2000. And more than $3 billion in commerce flows through Essent Solutions each year. So let's just say this right off the bat. SEO was complicated. And there are a lot of things complicating it. For one, it's hard to get complete answers about SEO. The search engine providers won't fully reveal their ranking methods because they don't want the other search engine providers to know. As a result, there is simply so much to SEO that search engine providers purposely never explain. Not only that, but the rules are constantly changing. Search engines are always evolving, optimizing themselves, to determine the most relevant content. So even to experienced online marketers, the ball is always moving. And SEO is becoming increasingly complicated. Ten years ago, SEO strategy might have been placing a few important keywords in prominent locations on a website, but search engines are becoming more sophisticated in deciding relevance, which means it's, it's becoming exponentially more sophisticated to practice solid SEO. So, no one ever really told you all the rules. Even if someone did tell you, the rules are always changing. Every time the rules change, they get more sophisticated. And you're supposed to keep, keep up with all of that while you're doing business. So today, we're going to take a look at 10 technological factors to consider in search engine optimization, what they mean to search engines, what they mean to people, and what they mean for your website. And with that, here to take you into greater detail is your presenter, Will Austin. Will is a business analyst for Essent, and he's also a specialist in the promotional products industry. He's here to take you through some of the technological roots of search engine optimization. Thank you very much, Doug. And as Doug mentioned, we're taking you, we're going to take a look at the 10 technological factors to consider in search engine optimization, starting with metadata titles, metadata descriptions, metadata keywords, rich snippets for products, rich snippets for reviews, rich snippets for video, breadcrumb paths, URL structure, image alt text and file names, mobile friendliness. When considering SEO factors, it's important to consider metadata. Metadata or meta tags provide search engines information about a web page or website that a search engine can show in search results. So when we're talking about metadata, Page titles and page descriptions are the most critical pieces of metadata. They're so fundamental that it's hard to imagine a website even being found without them. The page title is very simply the, the clickable headline that shows up on search engine results. And the page description is the text that appears under the page title on search returns. Page titles are a huge factor, not just for robots, but for people. Search engines crawl the titles to know what a page is about. So the title is a high-ranking cue for search engines to understand the page. Some SEO experts say that the title metadata is the most important ranking factor besides the content that's actually on the page. And the title is a very high-ranking cue for people, too. It's 
generally the first and often only thing that people read when deciding to click on a search engine result. It's also important to note that page titles are often displayed by default when somebody links to it on social media. As for page descriptions, they're not as important or quite as important as titles, but they definitely shouldn't be ignored. Google announced in 2009 that it's no longer using page descriptions as a ranking factor. So it's automatically not as important as the page title, but it's a high ranking cue to people who read descriptions to decide whether they should click. And also like page titles, page descriptions are often shown by default on social media links. So those metadata descriptions may not be a factor to search engines, but it's definitely a big factor to people. And a third piece of metadata that's worth discussing is keywords. They're simply words or phrases that describe a page. Like on the blog post that we're showing on the screen, the key words in this case are the names of the events that the post is about. Metadata keywords have lost importance in recent years. Google announced that it stopped using keyword, keywords metadata as a ranking factor. So the keywords aren't visible in search returns either. So in addition to not serving search engines, they also don't serve people either. But one sure way to get search engines to notice your keywords in a bad way is keyword stuffing. This is a, a black hat practice of adding misleading metadata keywords in the hopes of shooting up the rankings. If your metadata keywords don't match the content of the page, the page runs the risk of being penalized. So when considering the lack of upside for metadata keywords, SEO practitioners should limit the time spent on it. So the much, the much better practice in this case is to use the keywords and the content of the, web page, of the website. Data is just one way of providing search engines information about your page. You can also use structured data markup to create what's called rich snippets that are then included to enhance search returns. So what does that mean exactly? Well, it, it's, it's actually better to show you. Have you ever seen products that get a little bit of special treatment in search returns and wondered why? Maybe the search return gets displayed with a rating like this, or maybe it's because, or maybe it's just displayed with a photo like this. These pages aren't getting special from Google, they're getting special treatment from the companies creating the pages. What happens is the person creating the page adds the code to it, or better yet, they have a platform that automatically adds the code for you. This code is called structured data markup, and it can communicate a lot of information to search engines. For product pages, it can include information like the rating, the image, like we just saw, plus other information, including price, availability, and more. The search engine, in turn, can then show that information in search returns as a rich snippet. The rich snippet enhances your page in search results because it helps your page stand out. And structured markup data works similarly for other types of rich snippets. For example, Sometimes you see search engine returns that are a product review. That's also a rich snippet at work. This one includes the rating, like we saw before, plus it includes part of the body of the review. It can also include the author, the date of the review, an image of what's being reviewed, and more information. And if you've seen a video displayed with a search return, the same thing is happening. Here the snippet is showing a thumbnail of the video, the name of the video, when it was uploaded, and by whom, and a description of the video. 
So the benefits of rich snippets are clear. They simply enhance your search return. They give searchers more information. This means more quality traffic because, well, people have a better idea of what's on the page instead of clicking to potentially find out that it's not what they wanted. You'll get more people who know they want to go to your website rather than people who are just simply guessing. And they make the search return, yeah, and they make the search return stick out from the others. So it's more likely to catch people's attention. So do rich snippets actually make your page rank higher? Some of the major search engines simply, simply say no, but that should, that should just be taken with a grain of salt. The answer is probably that the existence of the rich snippets itself doesn't help rank, but providing the rich snippets is going to get you better traffic, a decreased bounce rate, more time spent on the site per visitor, and a host of other benefits related to quality traffic. So the rich snippets are ultimately improving pages for people, and that's ultimately going to get the pages favored by search engines whose number one goal is to provide people the best pages. So we've taken a look at three types of rich snippets that can enhance your search engine returns. We look specifically at products, reviews, and video because they're the most relevant to e-commerce. But it's also worth noting that Google supports rich snippets for news, events, recipes, and software applications. So the takeaway is that when a search return looks like it has special treatment, there's a good chance that rich snippets are at work and you can give your pages that treatment as well. All right, so that brings us to breadcrumb paths. Google doesn't classify a breadcrumb path as a rich snippet, but functionally it's almost the same. You put structured markup data on your web page, and the result is an enhanced search engine return. Usually on a search return, you'll see the URL displayed like this. It's simply the URL to that single page. If the URL is long, you might also see it like this with a few dots along the way. It's the same URL, just with a bit taken out to make it fit visually. But sometimes you'll see the URL turn out like this. It's not a URL to a single page, but to multiple pages within the site. This is known as a breadcrumb path, and it illustrates the hierarchy and the structure of a website. So pens, in this example, is a subcategory of writing instruments, which is a subcategory of office supplies, and that's a subcategory of the main site. Breadcrumb paths do have a number of benefits. One is helping people better understand the site by presenting it in a clear, logical fashion. This helps visitors steer to other parts of the site more easily. And page views have the potential to go up because the site is easier to navigate. It's beneficial for search engines too. One big factor is that the breadcrumb path makes the search engine return multiple links to your site. If the searcher is interested in more than pens, now they have an easy way to click up a level to see more of what you have to offer. The breadcrumbs also help search engines crawl the site. Web crawlers are on a constant mission to understand how the World Wide Web fits together and what every single page is about. The breadcrumb path is simple, straightforward cue to search engines about how your content fits in. So now let's move on to URL structure. Sound URL structure has many of the benefits of a sound breadcrumb path. A clean, logical URL structure 
makes it easier for, for both people and search engines to understand the site. Let's take, it, let's take a look at two possible URLs for the same page. The first has the kind of tidiness that we liked in the breadcrumb path. The site organization and the hierarchy is reflected. People in search engines alike don't need to expend much processing power to know that it's a product page for the ErgoGrip N22 Pen. The second URL says very little about the page. People need to click and hope that, that it's what you know, they're looking for. Search engines have to spend extra processing power combing through the contents of the page. All that a person or a search engine can really infer is that there's a product for sale and it has an identification number. So that takes us to image, alt text, and file names. Everyone knows images make a web page or any publication for that matter more appealing to readers. But what about search engines that can't see the images in the literal sense that people see them? That's where image, alt text, and file names come in. As a web surfer, you most often see the image alt text when an image doesn't load. It looks something like this. And the text tells you what's in the photo. For, for you as a person, that, that might not do much, but to a search engine, that, it, that essentially is how every image looks. The image alt text gives the search engine a, an idea of what the image shows, even though it can't see the image. So the file name you give to your image definitely should not be arbitrary. Again, search engines don't see photos in the literal sense. So every morsel of information can, you can provide about the photo is important. So if we look at this first file name, it's a typical default name that a camera is going to assign to a new photo, but it really doesn't say anything at all. Once you put it on a website, people will be able to see it and what it is, but how will the search engine know? Now if we take a look at the second file name, a search engine can, tr can crawl those words and very quickly know what it's a picture of. So the more detailed, the better. The same thing goes for other types of files that you might upload, like PDFs or videos. You want to give the search engine as much context as possible. So to recap, search engines don't see images in the literal sense. They rely on context to understand what the image shows, and alt text and image files, or file names, are among the few ways to provide search engines that context. Now, to mobile friendliness, mobile friendliness is an is increasingly important to SEO with mobile now supporting a majority of web traffic even for web, for e-commerce. In 2015, you might have heard about Google's so-called mobile getting. That's when Google changed its algorithms to penalize sites and pages that weren't mobile friendly. It was actually more of a tweak than mobile getting because non-mobile sites weren't very sharply punished, but they did see their rankings fall a few pegs and searches performed on mobile devices. Still, the event shouldn't be taken lightly with mobile traffic continually rising. Google will certainly begin to squeeze tighter on websites that aren't mobile friendly. Mobile, mobile getting was just the first warning. Websites seem to become mobile friendly or face greater penalties going forward. But the good news is that it's not hard to set up a site to be responsive to mobile devices. The first thing to do is to check if your website is mobile friendly. So the Google Search Console, formerly called Google Webmasters is free and will tell you which pages on your site are not considered mobile friendly and why. And you might actually be surprised how many pages are mobile friendly already. 
website providers are starting to automatically build in mobile friendliness, even retroactively in some cases. If there are pages that, that are not mobile friendly, the next step is to fix them. And it's actually easier said than done, of course. It's going to require developers. Not every business has developers, but website providers know the need for, for mobile friendliness, and any good one should be able to make your website mobile friendly. All right, so that takes us back to our list. So we've, we've taken a look at 10 technological SEO factors that business people rarely have time to consider while trying to do business. And all of these contribute in some part to making your website friendlier to search engines and people alike. So I'm going to turn it back over to Doug, and he's going to tell you how you can learn more. Thank you very much, Will. Essence supports all the SEO features and functionality discussed today with its Essence Site Builder e-commerce platform. We have an automated approach to search engine optimization that eliminates much of the complication. The idea is to automate SEO just by running your back office. And very briefly, this is how it works. Built into Site Builder websites are SEO best practices that account for everything we discussed today. Uh, Site Builder can then integrate with a business management system or ERP so it knows what's going on in the back office. And then as products are added or changed in the back office, Site Builder can automatically generate product pages with SEO best practices built in. To learn more about how Essent automates SEO, you can visit essent.com slash automated SEO. There you'll find a detailed look at how to automate SEO just by running the back office, plus how to get in touch with Essent for a free consultation. Again, that's essent.com slash automated SEO for the next steps. Thanks again to everyone for attending today's webinar.